Hi, this is Rich Harrington for Photo Focus, and we've been working with video for photographers. So far, we've built out a rough edit in Photoshop, refined it with music and sound, added some titles and transitions, and now I'm ready to color correct and color grade. Color correction is fixing images, and grading is giving them a look for style. Now, as photographers, you're used to doing this step early on, but with video, you want to do it afterwards because it becomes important for two reasons. First, you probably have less video used than what you shot, so why do work on video clips that aren't going to make it into the final video? And secondly, we need to adjust things in relation to what comes before and after. So I need this shot and this shot to feel like they're similar times of day. But then as we're moving forward and it's starting to become night, I want to start to indicate that by getting these two shots to come a little bit closer in appearance. And then once we're on the street, I want to get nice consistent blacks between these shots. Well, let's go ahead and color grade and color correct. All right, let's go ahead and adjust this footage. First off, for this particular video, I used a camera that shot in the log color space. Now, this uses basically a reduced amount of contrast and saturation. You see here that the blacks are not clipping and that the whites don't push all the way over on the histogram, and that's pretty normal. More and more cameras are offering this either as an option built in or as something that you can load from a third party. So what I want to do is add an adjustment layer. I've selected video group one here, and I'm going to add an adjustment layer for color lookup. Now by default, it becomes indented over the first shot. We're going to change that in just a second. I'll choose to load a lookup table, and on my Creative Cloud Files folder, this is a folder where you can easily sync things between different computers that's included with your Creative Cloud membership, I've stored some lookup tables, including one specifically for my Blackmagic camera. I click OK. Now you don't see that applied because right now it's actually only affecting this last shot. If I turn that off and on, you'll see that it makes a big difference in the footage. Let's go ahead here and we'll just pull that so it's out of the group and then set it above. And now, instead of being indented, you see that it applies to every single shot. So this makes it easier to apply that adjustment afterwards to expand the color. All right, let's start at the beginning here and we'll make a simple levels adjustment. Clicking the levels button, I can do things like lower the output value of the white if I want to make that shot a bit darker and move the middle slider there to improve gamma or pull the black input slider in for some contrast. That's looking pretty good. I'll toggle that off and on. You could see the before and after. Let's go to our next shot. In this case, I want to make a curves adjustment. And you can use whatever type of adjustment works for you. I like the on image tool, which makes it really simple to pull on a point on the frame. So there I'm lowering the sky a bit. But then I want to lift up the skin tones. And that made a nice adjustment. And you'll note that it's indented here and isolated to that single shot. There we go. This one's looking pretty good. I'm just going to make a levels adjustment. And in this case, Option or Alt click on the word Auto, giving me the ability to do things like fix contrast and even snap the midtones to white balance. And you see how quick and easy that was to tweak the shot. And that's some of the great things about Photoshop and video. You can use the tools you're already familiar with. So if you want to change something like the black levels here, just use the curves adjustment or you want to pull the whites down. The on image tool there makes it really easy to go after the different areas and refine the look of that color correction. All right, I like that there. Let's just quickly finish this out. That's feeling pretty good. I'll do curves adjustment and that option or alt click on auto gives you the same cool automatic adjustments. So you could snap neutral midtones there to remove any sort of color cast. Or remember, take advantage of the eyedroppers yourself to go in and manually set things like white balance and neutral gray. Let's go ahead here and try this as a neutral gray. A little bit cool, but not too bad. And I can always, of course, go into the individual channels to refine that until I get the adjustment that I want. And that's one of the great things about this is just how flexible it is as you make adjustments. So by tweaking the individual color channels there, I got the type of adjustment I wanted for that color correction. All right, let's go through. 
And in this case, I want to reuse a shot. So let's just take this value here and I'm going to duplicate the layer and I could drag it above this other shot. But we need to tell it to go ahead and group with previous. So I just need to click this button here and it indents. That way it's only applied to that next shot. That's looking pretty good. I'm just going to refine that a bit. We'll lift that up and let's readjust the black point. Find something nice and dark in the scene. That's looking pretty good. So you see how easy that is to refine your adjustments as you go through. And let's finish out our last shot here. That's looking pretty close. I'll do a curves adjustment with auto and we'll let that snap a bit. And I like that. So you see how easy it is to use any of the adjustments you're used to using to go ahead and color correct the individual shots. Plus, you can add an overall adjustment, such as a color lookup table. And remember, those color lookup tables can also do things like add style. So you'll find all sorts of film stocks if you want to simulate looks like Fuji film stock or Kodak film stock. And that's going to give it just an overall look that takes on a bit more filmic type properties. And you'll find presets in here for all sorts of things like time of day or styles. There's a nice soft warming look. And you see how that affects the shots. And remember, the cool thing is, is thanks to third parties, you can load up things and grab other LUTs. Like here are some lookup tables for things like Instagram type looks. And I can go ahead and apply the Hefe look. And there it is applied to my shot. Remember, if you do this and you've selected it, you're going to want to ungroup that so it does not apply to just a single shot. And now that's applied across the board. And if it's too strong, you can always back off its opacity a bit to dial in the look that you like. But I'm happy with that overall look. I've got a cool feel. I wanted really rich dark blacks. And I've got the great glow of the city lights. And I'm very happy with the end results. At this point, I'm going to save my work, file save, and it's captured. And in our next video, I'll show you how to do the exporting so you can publish your video to the web or give it to other people.